What up, everybody? Welcome to Legacy TV and the Convo Podcast. And today, man, you guys know I rep my city. You guys know I love Santa Ana. You guys know, you know, when it comes to this music stuff, I always said I was the king of the town. And, you know, I always said that in my music. And, you know, right here I got the man when it comes to the boxing. I'm talking about the pride of Santa Ana. And, you know, I get behind my people, and that's what we should be doing you know, I got one of the best boxers in the world today. We got Alexis Rocha in thank the house. Bro, What's up, you. my brother? No, pleasure, man. Thank, thank you, you for thank, having me. Thank you, thank you for here for coming through and uh, blessing us with some of your time, bro. No, man, pleasure's all mine. Appreciate you coming. You. He's just so you guys know, he's literally just coming out. Like I had hit him up to come through the show the last week, like yeah. like before your fight. Oh yeah, before my fight. I had, so. Yeah, we we talked before your fight. Yeah, and you were like, you know what? Like all calm. You like, let me just. I got a fight coming up this weekend. Uh, let me we'll, let me go we'll, knock we'll, this dude yeah, out. We'll talk <laughs> after. We'll after i was yeah. like i was like hell yeah and uh and i was actually supposed to be at the fight bro and just because man I, I was so busy but I'm, I'm i'm i was so disappointed i missed yeah. it bro because i i was at one of your fights and seeing you the way you fight bro is like you know but for me but i love boxing i grew up watching boxing I, I i trained boxing this was one of my favorite things to do and when i saw you fight live and you know this is the the, the homie from the hometown yeah. it was like yeah, man, I'm getting behind, and then when you knock dude out, man, I was going crazy, bro. At yeah, the YouTube theater, I, what was dude's name? Uh, you remember that, that fight, George Ashy? Yeah, that yeah, that George dude. Ashing. Yeah, yeah, man, that that was a good fight. And then when you just start getting in this grill, bro, when you start, I was like, yeah, this, I, I'm I'm behind this yeah, dude. Like, appreciate this, this, it, bro. You know, Especially you, from the city, you know, you, so you know, you, rep you represent well, and and you fight like you're, you're from out here, which is you know. Which is even better, bro. Yeah, you know I got that. Mean? I got that aggressive style coming coming in your face and fucking. That's that's the, that's what people love, bro. That's what people love to see, and and uh, I, I I believe it's it's your time right now, bro. It's your yeah, time. Um, but let's take it back for you know. Let's get let let's get a little bit of into like your history and stuff like that. Like I said, you know, guys from Santa Ana. Were you born and raised in Santa Ana? Born and raised in Santa Ana. Born and raised in Santa Ana. Yeah, what, 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 what elementary school did you go to? So I went to Jefferson Elementary it's down the street right here, and then I went to McFadden in Sigerstrom High School. Oh, so yeah. every everything. So uh, I, let me, let's let's start with elementary. Were you, were your mom and dad together? Did you guys grow up in the same household? Yeah, we grew up in the same household. I grew and you up have like, a you have a, a brother as well. So yeah, it's a family of four right now. Um, I got two older brothers and a, my youngest brother. Um, yeah. So all brothers, all brothers, four all brothers, boys, all boys. Did yeah. all of them box? Um, the youngest one didn't, but the other the other two did. And you yeah. were the so I'm the third I'm the third child and I just kind of tagged along with them. So my story is I in elementary I was freaking so gordito, bro. I was fat, man. So <laughs> I, I was about hey, me too. It's all good. Yeah, was, man, who, who, who doesn't have tea, you know? <laughs> especially in those days. It's, yeah, especially. So yeah, I grew up non-athletic, man. I would play video games, play Halo, Black Ops, and um, <laughs> I mean I still do shit, but. Yeah, <laughs> I grew up just playing video games, and and then from there, man, just started building the habit of eating, and not not working out or anything. So you and got pretty uh, overweight, like as in elementary school. Yeah, in elementary school, I just started packing on the pounds, and then by sixth grade, I want to say I reached about two hundred and five pounds. So I was about twelve years old, eleven years old at the time, two hundred and five pounds. Big and boy, then, yeah, big boy, and that around that time, that's when you start taking your physicals for Were people giving you a hard time at school. Oh at hell yeah, school, yeah, because yeah. kids are, you know, as you guys all know, kids are, you know, they're messed up. Yeah, they're, they're, they're messed they're, up. They're, they're cruel, you know. And, Heck yeah, and uh, and you know, especially if you're somebody that stands up for yourself, it will cause you to get into some issues, you know. Uh, so being overweight, <laughs> yeah. So uh, damn. So you know, and then this is like, was it? What do you think it was that caused you to be overweight? Was it the lifestyle that was in the household? Yeah. Or like, what do you think? What do you think? It, was it just you, or was it the family, or what do you think it was that that caused you to become overweight at that? Young I think age? it was a mixture of both. I mean, not to like knock my parents down, but you know they allowed it. You know they condoned the way I was eating, and everyone around them would tell them, "Hey, you know these kids." What were you eating? Do you remember? 
Oh, bro, what was I eating? Like rice, a lot of lot of Mexican food. A lot of Mexican food. I love Mexican food, bro. But but that Mexican food, the one thing I I realized when I started dieting is like that's one of the things I always have to cut out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Yeah. my I mean, like you could get away with just eating like the 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 protein and the salsa and stuff, but like. There's the tortillas, oh, the tortillas. No, you can't eat them, man. That's, that, that's what I was eating. That was killing me. <laughs> yeah, bro. I, it makes sense though. It's, so you know, uh, you start getting overweight, and then sixth, seventh grade, and you know, that's when I think a lot of you know, especially young men, young yeah. boys, start to kind of you know, you're getting ready to go to junior high. Like, yeah, you, you start, know what I mean. You start building that, you know, that self esteem. You know, yeah, um, yeah, getting a little confidence about Were yourself. Were you doing any sports up up, up no, until that no, time? No Nothing? sports, no sports whatsoever. I was always around boxing though, because my two older brothers they were boxers at the time. One of them being Ron Rios from Santa Ana. You know, yeah, <clears throat> he's also still boxing to this day. But back then, you know, he was grow- he was um trying to make the Olympic trials. He was so close to making the Olympic team he fell short in like literally the finals so he was a runner up to to be in the 20 i mean the 2008 olympics for beijing uh he fell short but around this time i was going around and traveling with them so he fought in texas we, me and my whole family went over there to, to texas and to watch him support him and i never grew an interest it's just when i reached seventh grade when i was about 12 years old that i wanted to go to the gym to lose weight and then from there, I lost. You immediately thought boxing to go? Or to yeah, lose I mean, that was easy. See, my brothers are already training. My brothers are training. It'll be easier, you know. Yeah. I'll go. They'll take me to the They're gym. in good shape. They were, in, I'm assuming, good shape. They're in good shape, and I just want to live a healthier lifestyle. So, you know, like the tortillas, you know, I got to <laughs> cut all that out. You know. <laughs> yeah, you say goodbye to that shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, the, it's the worst part. But, yeah, I, I cut that out. And then from there, um, I started going to the gym. And then within five months, I lost about 60 pounds. So so seventh around sixth seventh grade you start going you start boxing already started boxing what yeah. boxing gym did you go to TKO Boxing Club here in Santa Ana it's okay. on C- Center and McFadden okay I'm just yeah. making sure we get the whole yeah, story the whole for, the, for 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 for, that, for those that don't know you uh-huh. so TKO Boxing at the time when you started uh, was it was it was it a big gym a lot of popular fighters out of there was it yeah there was some some fighters that are coming up with my brother him being one there was another guy Luis Ramos and they were both signed to Golden Boy Promotions. There were big prospects coming up, so you already had people <coughs> in your gym that you you know you were looking up to. Your brother being one of them. Yeah. So when you started going to to train and and initially to just lose weight, mm-hmm. you didn't have the intentions to want to fight. You were just doing like I want to lose some weight. Yeah, I just want to lose some weight at first, and then you start going into spar, and you start just developing this this passion for it. And you're like, damn, this is pretty it's pretty pretty tight. You know, punching people it just sucks when you get punched back. And it just, the whole, just like a whole environment of going to the gym, you know, you start sweating or, you know, you get sweat so much and you look around that no one's going to, like, you know, criticize you or tell you anything because everyone's pouring sweat too. So you're like, okay, cool. Um, you just start building this work ethic that, you know, this guy's working hard, but I want to work harder than him. Or if not, I mean, I want to work just as hard as him or if not, I want to, I'll work him. And then all this little stuff, you just start, you know, it just starts coming easier to you and you start getting a passion, like I said. And then even the stuff you do outside the boxing gym where you start going on your runs, you know, you wake up. What I used to do back then when I would go to school, I would wake up at five in the morning, go for a run, come to the gym. I mean, go to school. After I was done, I'd immediately walk back home. And then from there, my brothers would take me to the boxing gym. Go back home, finish my homework, and then I'll go for another run or something if, you know, I was bored Damn. or whatever. Damn, you were already, so immediately you started training like, a, you know, <laughs> you took it serious. Yeah, I took it serious. I built the, I built the discipline at an early age. And I bet losing all that weight so fast, because, like, I, I remember I kind of, you know, been up and down in weight throughout yeah. my life, too. And especially with sports and martial arts, you always start to see a difference. And, you know, I, you know, I remember the, the, you know, those times that when you're losing 10 pounds and then you look and you see yourself in the mirror and like, you're like, damn, yeah. I, oh shit, you know, I can wear a smaller t-shirt, a smaller t-shirt you now. know what I mean? Yeah. Though, though, it's a good feeling. It's oh, a good feeling. Yeah. So like, 
like right away you get into this sport, you know, that, that your brother's doing, mm-hmm. you start losing weight, you start seeing benefits from it right away, and you start to en- you start to enjoy it. You start to enjoy the whole process. Yeah, and, and, and it's and it's and it's good for you. It keeps you out of like, you know, neg- uh, negative stuff and uh, and at that age I, I assume you already were not getting in trouble or anything like yeah. that. So even before that I was kinda getting in trouble because my parents split up. And my dad went somewhere else, and then I was just kind of choosing to hang out with, like, my brothers and my mom. I wasn't really going with my dad, and my dad wasn't really there to, you know, to give me that, you know, that father. Fa- be that father yeah, figure. Yeah. And then my brothers had moved out, too, so it was just me and my mom and my little brother, my youngest brother. So I wasn't really hanging out with my brothers, and they, no one was really giving me that discipline. My mom, you know, they... My, Women could raise a mother could raise a boy, but they can't raise him to be a man. Yeah, no. So, there's um, things that they can't they can't teach you certain things that a man only a man only can. a man could. Yeah, exactly. so I was uh, hanging out with friends and I was getting in trouble. You know, I was going to school, fighting a lot, and whatnot. And then, um, yeah, my brothers also started coming, putting me in check. My dad was putting me in check too. So that's when. I was like, damn, and then this time I was developing bad eating habits. Yeah. So yeah, and then took the, what really caused it to me to go still going to the gym was when I went to the take a physical for like sixth, seventh grade. I forgot around there, and they told me I had really high cholesterol, like on the verge to be having diabetes. Damn. I had type two diabetes, and I was just like, damn. Yeah, you had to make a change right then. Yeah, there. I had to make a change, <laughs> a big change right there. Yeah. I was like, dang. That's that's yeah. I mean that you know you gotta sometimes in life you you know. Things, certain situations will force you to take your yeah. life seriously. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's good that you did, bro. Because at an early age too. Because yeah. l- look at the, you know, l- when you look at yourself now, look at the shape you're in now. You know yeah, what I mean? and the shape, and just yeah. all, all the yeah. stuff that I've gone through. Yeah, you know? yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. So you start training, you start losing weight, and then and then what happens there? So I started losing weight, started sparring, and then my coach Hector Lopez, he started seeing something in me, and he's like, hey. um, I remember, uh, I remember I was kind of by the side of the boxing gym, and uh, I was just working out. And then my other brother Salvador Rios, who used to box too, he was right next to me. And then he he goes up to my brother. He's like, "Hey, we have a show, which is like an amateur boxing show where they just take a fighter and they match you up with someone identical to your weight, and identical to your experience, and and your age." And he tells my brother that he's like, "Hey, we're going to an amateur show in two weeks. Like, be ready." And my brother's like, okay. Uh, Hector goes to me, and then he looks at me. He's like, hey, I'm going to take you in two weeks. You're going to fight. And I was like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> I don't want to fight. Like My, my intention was just to come to lose weight. <laughs> my brother saw him, the face, just just, the, just my face drop and everything. I got all white. Like I saw a ghost or something, and I was like, like I, when he told me that, I didn't say no right away. I just kind of like. <laughs> okay, but I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> my brother came up to me. He's like, "Hey, you're like you don't have to fight. Like I'll go tell him." And then something in my heart just told me, "Like no, like I want to give it a try." And I told it. I told him, "Like no, like you had your, you had your door right there." Yeah, that was my door. I was so <laughs> close to him. Like yeah, I don't want to fight. Go tell him that I don't want to fight. I don't want to have the courage to tell him. <laughs> There's so many people that have probably so many fighters that have that. Had that oh moment, yeah. Bro. I was so close telling him too, like, yeah, go tell him. I'm not trying to fight. But uh, you were like, you know what? That you just something inside you were like, you know what? Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna face this fear. Yeah, some, something, you know, face, face yeah. the fire head yeah, on. Yeah. So I was like, all right, like, I'm, like, I'm good. I'm gonna fight. Oh yeah. So those two weeks passed. Um, during those two weeks, I'd go to the gym every day. I'd run in the morning. I'd run after after the gym. I was dieting. I remember I weighed like really low. I was like 144 pounds, which is like the lowest I've ever been since like five years old or something, you know, because I was always a big kid. Yeah, and you were <laughs> gotten to 200 and some 205 pounds. 205 right? pounds. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah I, I got really low, and I remember I weighed in, and then right off the bat, like the old, once you get to like the amateur show, you get weighed in, and they will like name, say your name, your age, and how much you, how many fights you have. So they put it on the board. And they put it right next to, like, under this other kid. And I looked under, and that kid had the same identical weight as me. He was the same age as me. Um, he had more fights than me. And I was, like, right off the bat, I'm like, damn, I have to fight. Like, for sure. Because sometimes they take you to an average show, and it's not guaranteed that they're going to find you or match you up with someone your weight. Sometimes there's no opponents for you. So 
It is, yeah, it's just, it is what it, it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So right when they put me up, I'm like, damn, I'm going to fight this kid. And my heart <laughs> just sank. I mean, my, my stomach dropped. I was like, damn. And then within like 20 minutes, my coach told me like, hey, we have a fight for you. And I'm like, damn it, I knew it. <laughs> like some, some, something in me just got all nervous. But I was like, all right. And I, now it's time to like, you know, put, put on the show and just get ready or whatever. And then... Yeah, so that, that my first fight was here on 4th Street. I don't know if you remember, there was a boxing gym. Like, that's the first ever boxing gym in Santa Ana. Yeah. Um, it was right there on 4th Street, and I forgot the other street. But they closed that little street down, and they built had the boxing ring there. I remember all my family went to go cheer me on, and uh, I ended up knocking that kid out in the second round. So I was like, damn. Like, this is a good feeling when they raise my hand and knock, just, out cold knockout? Not or, out cold. Or like TKO. Like a TKO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dropped him. I didn't drop him. I just beat him up, snapping his head back, and in the in the amateurs they, they, they stop it on the feet. They stop it on the yeah. feet. So it's a good knockout. So it's like a knockout. Yeah, yeah. it's a knockout. <laughs> yeah. So they it would have been it. a knockout. <laughs> yeah. So they stopped it, and then um, I remember after the fight, I'm like, damn, that was badass. Like this this whole rush, this whole adrenaline. You were hooked. It, yeah, I was hooked. It's like yeah. an addiction. You, it's so hard to describe it, man. It's yeah. just. Well, it's, it's, it was the process probably for you too. The process, the victory, you, you and everything. Because you you went from being an overweight kid to now all of a sudden like take you know weighing in, yeah, at a in great shape, yeah. fighting, winning, knocking somebody out. Like you went com- you completely three sixty who you were exactly. So yeah. was the, that that was, that's a motivating feeling for right. some for some people. Like it takes like a little win like this to start a fire up, yeah. up under you yeah so so I, i'm i'm assuming like as soon as you won you were like all right i'm ready for, i'm gonna get go get ready for the next one <laughs> yeah i think it was accumulation of little wins like me running me dropping five pounds and to me dropping 10 and 20 like those little small wins added up to uh that big win which was open the door for my boxing career, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, one hundred percent. How many amateur? So, so you start your. How what age were you first amateur fight? My first amateur fight was thirteen years old. Thirteen, and then how many amateur fights did you have before you turned S- pro? Sixty four amateur fights. Sixty four yeah. amateur fights within the span of four and a half years. Damn, bro! Yeah. Like you were fighting every every other uh, bro, day. Bro, yeah. So <laughs> damn, that's a lot of experience, bro. Yeah. In nationals, you fight. Three to four times, and this is all with headgear. All right? with headgear, right, yeah. So, but still, yeah, you're, same, you, yeah, you're, you're, you're still getting black eyes. Yeah, you're still yeah, getting headbutted. Yeah, you're still getting nose. hit hard. Right? Yeah. yeah, like it's still the same thing. Like, yeah, damn, that's a lot of fights, bro. A lot of fights. I, it, so, so from you turn eighteen at eighteen, you turn pro. Eighteen, I turn pro. Damn, yeah, I got time with gold. So sixty four fights. Between the age of of thirteen to eighteen, that's crazy. And when, yeah. do you remember your your amateur record? I was uh, so I, I think I had sixty three fights. I was fifty eight and five. Fifty eight and five. Wow. Yeah, most of those losses. That's crazy amateur career. Yeah, bro. most of those losses were international. So I I so from age thirteen, you know, I started piling up the victories. At fourteen, I fought in this tournament called National Junior Olympics, and the winner. They take you to Russia to represent Team USA and the Junior National Team. So I won the whole thing of Junior Olympics. Then I represented Team USA when I went to Russia. The first day I got to Russia, I turned 15. And then I had like a little mini camp over there. And then I fought. And I got silver, I got second place, which is a silver. I lost to the Russian in his hometown. Damn. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. That's a, that's just a lot of, that's a lot of experience. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, looking back at it, yeah, fuck, man. I mean, excuse my language, people, <laughs> but yeah, um, damn, so that you were ready to go pro, you were ready. And your last amateur fight, I'm assuming, was a victory, yeah, my last amateur yeah. fight, and was they a were victory. like, and like, you know, during your amateur career, you're not where you, you know, you. Had you stopped focusing on school and stuff, or were you also like? I mean, I needed to focus on school to pass. You, you did, you did enough to get get through it. I did, like, but you I, were focused one hundred percent. Oh like, yeah, like running in the morning and doing. Where you do, did you do like strength and conditioning as well as your boxing? Like at, um, at coming that, up in your amateur times. Uh yeah, I had a strength and conditioning coach at the time to, oh, uh, yeah. to help me out and stuff. Yeah, and then you know the running, the cart, the the road work. But you weren't making no money. This, I wasn't making this no whole money. Time. No, this is a whole just the experience. Yes, yeah, you're yeah, doing it for yeah. fun. See, you know? see, so sixty four fights of no money. 
before you know you even turn pro yeah and now finally at at you know after this you, you're starting to turn pro at 18 you find you're, you're gonna make some money but it's not gonna be much in the beginning right no it's not much in the but beginning. but it's something like at some, least at least now you know you're starting your your actual career yeah and everything counts now yeah so everything counts now you you know your record starts you're, from zero this, you know, you yeah so you're pro all, all those 64 fights are yeah are just gone yeah they're just guys. gone <laughs> and you start pro i mean it's not gone it's completely it's experience it's the experience it gets you, you it get. gets you prepared for the the, the, yeah. the, the big fights the, yeah the, the professional the professional fights. fights yeah yeah and the crowd and mm-hmm. and and the the competition and the experience um that's crazy so your first professional fight yeah uh it was in 2016 against a guy named jordan rosario at the Belasco Theater in Los Angeles. Were you at that time? Were you more nervous because it was your first professional? I wasn't nervous at all. I, you had just so many fights already that you were just comfortable. It's also it's something new that you don't really know what you're going into. So it's yeah. You I mean yes, I was nervous. Any till this day, I still get nervous. That's yeah. never gonna go away. Every fighter. Does. Every fight gets. Every they, fighter gets. They'll nervous. lie to you if they. Yeah. They, they, they don't. Yeah. They, so <laughs> any every fight, I get nervous. Uh, remember for the first fight specifically yes i was nervous but i was more pumped up ready to go because i didn't know what was going to go into and then i was 18 at the time and you feel just on top of the world like i'm gonna make my pro debut um i worked so hard for it too and i'm like damn i gotta impress all i want to impress all these people you just have like a little chip on your shoulder um and yeah i ended up knocking the guy on the second round you like knocking people out in the second round, bro. Yeah, second round, yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 they don't pay you to stay in there for the for whole over, fight. Yeah, they don't you know, pay for overtime, like, yeah. <laughs> so if you can get them out of there the first and second, you know, hell get, yeah. Yeah, get them out of there. Get them out of there, you know, save your brain and your body for the next one. Yeah. Um, Let me ask you this, bro. Like, as you're coming up through your amateur career, like, because boxing's hard on the body. Oh, yeah, it's really taxing on the body. Um. Your sparring was it like like full on like full on sparring, full on yeah. sparring. So this whole time you're like in your gym there, you guys your gym you trying know, to KO each other too. Like yeah, like sometimes going down. yeah. Sometimes. That's why I'm trying to get people to understand like boxing gym. Like people don't get it. Like you know MMA is one thing. You know jujitsu is one thing. You know Muay Thai is one thing. But but, but when you go to the boxing gym like. You know, guys are in there trying to really like trying to yeah put a name put a name for they're themselves trying to, yeah. they're trying to hurt you in there <laughs> yeah they are like some sparring partners there's some sparring partners that work with you but some like they come out to get you yeah for sure i'm i'm sure it's like that in you know in every sport but boxing, yeah. but boxing is just like there's no way to mix it up you know what i'm saying yeah like seriously. like in mma you like you could take them down yeah, you, know, and wrestle, you whatever. could clinch for a little while yeah, catch yeah. your breath but not not in boxing you boxing. just gotta keep throwing them hands yeah. bro so, all right. So you win your your first professional fight, and and now it's it's like it dawn it must dawn on you like this is it. This is my career. This yeah. is the, this is like I I I, I did the right things. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm now I'm gonna start, and your career starts taking off from there. You start when at what point in your career did you sign with Golden Boy? At eighteen, my first pro debut. Your first fight was first fight, right yeah. away with with. with when I first turned professional, they signed me. Not even That's my first fight. Yeah. Damn. So, they, I mean, they were scouting me. Having an older brother with Golden Boy Promotions. He was help. already there. He was already yeah. there. It did help me a lot. Put my name in the door. But I also had to back it up. You yeah. Know, my coach. And you did that. Yeah. My coach, Hector Lopez, you would say, like, hey, like, Ronnie's little brother's coming up. You guys are going to want to sign him. I mean, if I wasn't doing anything, if I was losing every tournament, they're going to be like, F this kid. So had you been around Oscar before you you fought f- for his promotion and stuff? No, never. I mean, like I said, they they were putting the word out for me, and they were when, like, "When was the first time you met Oscar De La Hoya?" My pro my pro debut. He was he was. I mean, the, I mean, when I before my pro debut, when I signed with Golden Boy, he was there. He was there for the yeah, signing. He was there for the signing. Yeah. Was he cool? Yeah, super yeah, cool, yeah. super cool dude. Were you excited? Were you a fan of Oscar? Oh De La heck yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I wanted to make the Olympic team when I was when I was initially coming up. Um, but the whole taking the headgear off and who was who was Oscar Deloitte? Who was my like my idol? He, he was your idol I would, as I, you were coming up. I was my yeah, he was my idol as coming oh. up. I would watch his videos when he went to the Olympics when you know his his mother was dying or his mother died. He promised her the gold medal 
won the gold medal and i was like damn i'd watch like highlights of him so, professionally but then the amateurs when i'm like damn that's tight full circle full circle full circle yeah. you're you know like your idol like someone you looked up to you're sitting there your son yeah you're about to start fighting for his promotion yeah it's i'm crazy, like damn. bro mm-hmm. that's a, that's that's a dope moment to to have you know have lived and gotten to and at such a young age yeah. already and then take me through your how many fights do you go through before you experience your first loss? I went sixteen and zero. Sixteen and oh. Sixteen and zero. Yeah. Sixteen. Sixteen fights, and I'm assuming most of them were by by stoppage. I believe. Damn, how many? I think ten of them were. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was looking at your record. There's a lot. Yeah. You got a lot of fights. So. Yeah, I got a lot of fights so, now. So, now, so now I'm a young vet now. So it's like, um, yeah. So you're you're sixteen and oh, You're like, as you're. Now tell me this: as you're coming up to sixteen and zero, like is the pay going up? The pay is going up. Yeah. Like is it is it getting to a point? Like I'm not trying. I don't. I know you don't want to tell everybody how much you got in your bank account, but like I'm just trying to like gauge like as a professional boxer, like when does it start getting good for you? Like you know you're you're knocking people out. You're, yeah. You got this big record. You're sixteen and zero. Was like, what do you think at that time were you getting good money? <laughs> at sixteen and zero. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, no, it, it was good money. It was good money. It was good money. Yeah. Then you, what was the name of the dude that your first lost? Rashidi Ellis. And how did you lose? I lost by unanimous decision. Unanimous yeah. Decision. Well, how did you take your first loss, bro? I mean, I was devastated. You know, I'm a competitor. I don't like to lose. And you had such like a fucking perfect record, bro. So yeah, that, he that, took my own, and that's the thing. Damn. You know? And then boxing, like MMA, that shit don't matter, yeah, it don't bro. Matter, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Wish, that, wish boxing was like <laughs> MMA, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like for MMA, like you, you 16 and one, like damn, that motherfucker is a killer. You yeah, know what I mean? 16 and one. But in boxing, it's like, oh, he's got a loss. Oh, he's got, he's, he gets rid of crazy, off. bro. Yeah, they get rid of off, and it that, sucks. It's that way, you know. Yeah, wish it, it shouldn't be like, like that though, man. Mm-hmm. Especially with the way, like when you got guys like you. With the way you fight, like that—that's yeah. that's what people want to see. That's mm-hmm. what people are interested in. So you, and then you bounce back from that. Bounce back for that. Um, you bounce back from that, and you go on an, another tear. I go another tear. I go seven or no five knockouts after that. And lots that, of knockouts. Lots and that, of knockouts. And, yeah. and I was I was there for one of the, one of those. Yeah, you were there for the YouTube theater one. That one was man. That, that was a like, knockout reel. Yeah, that yeah. man. You know, it's just like you. It's not just like the knockout. It's like you get the crowd, like in Pumped the fight up. with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, so, it's 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 inner. You're entertaining, bro. With, yeah, with, thankfully with I have a good crowd, man. Thankfully, yeah, I'm very, yeah, very you grateful. Got, yeah, you got your crew of people that come behind, yeah. behind you. I love to see it. I know, man. That's, you know that's what I'm saying. Good feeling. You know what I'm saying. And then, uh, then, and then after that, you you lost again. Lost again last late last year. Was this at the casino in Indio? So my first loss was at the casino in Indio. That was my first I, loss. I, 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 was, I was supposed to come to that one. Yeah. Oh. I, that one was in COVID, so there was no fans. Like, no, there, there, there was, was no fans. So there, I, there I, was, I, Did you have another fight over there after that? Yeah, no, I the, did. The, the, the first loss you're saying was... It was, was in Indio. Was I in fought Indio. one more time after that, and this was like early 20, 2023. So tell me tell me uh, your, your, your first loss was during COVID. Then this, the second loss <laughs> was, was also in Indio? No, it was in the forum. The, 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 the forum, forum, yeah, and in LA. Give me, give me one second. Yeah. So the first loss was at the forum, but then the the second loss. No, the the first loss was at Fantasy Springs in Indio. In Indio, I'm sorry. And then the second loss was at the forum at the in forum. LA. And that was that was not too long ago. Yeah, that that was late last year. That was what, I want to say, five months ago, six months ago. Six months ago, and yeah. you got hurt in that fight. Yeah, man, first time ever I got what, dropped. What what round? Was was it? I got was, I got I got stopped. Oh well, yeah, I got knocked out. Yeah, I got knocked out in the sixth round. In the sixth round, what yeah. what'd you what did you think like when you look back at that fight, right? Because this was the first guy in your career in your pro career that, that was not, that yeah, was yeah. able to stop you. Yeah, um, like what do you think the adjustments that you needed to have made, or what yeah. do you think you did wrong in that fight? So I had a game plan for that fight, and I knew the guy very well. I've sparred with him many rounds, so we kind of were familiar with each other's style. He's a he's a come forward fighter that's very aggressive. Comes forward, just throws punches and bunches. He tries to overwhelm you because he's he's a physically big guy. Yeah, he's very muscular. You know. Yeah, he's strong. Um, my game plan was to all box him. As soon as that first round came, 
popped me in the nose, broke my nose. Oh, right off the bat. Broke right off the bat. I think like yeah. the mid round. Um, blood was spilling. From there, it's a fight or flight mode. Yeah, and I wasn't trying to. Fl- I wasn't trying to take flight. Yeah. I was gonna fight. Yeah, so all my my natural have my natural instinct was to just bang it out with this dude. Throw him, and <laughs> and that's his game plan. Yeah, he he practiced a certain game plan, and I fell right into his game plan. And he just had the better night that night. Yeah, it happens. It's fight game. It's the fight game. Yeah, fact, and the thing was, you know, once your no, your nose uh, breaks like that, it's mm-hmm. like everything that everything that touches it is like yeah so i don't deviate symptoms so that's why the blood just kept pouring yeah. and pouring and yeah. pouring and you can have a tough more difficult time breathing and yeah the, you, you know, get more yeah you get the blood in your a, it's a lot it's a lot it's like, well man that that you know that's the fight game but then that's, that's but then the, yeah. you you didn't you, you didn't even like she let that shake you got right back to work yeah i mean don't you know, get me wrong it hurts your confidence you yeah know, it hurts your confidence you start second guessing yourself Never once did I thought, like, that's it. I'm done boxing. Yeah. It hurts you in a sense of, like, I've never been hurt. You know, it sucked that I had to be hurt in front of everyone. and never wanted anyone to see you didn't want me in that be, situation. Yeah, 100%. I never wanted to get knocked out like that, that, let alone lose. Yeah. Um, But it took took me a couple of weeks, you know, gave my composure. You know, I took two weeks off the gym. After that, I started going back, just working on little things and, you know, making more adjustments. Yeah. And, you know, we we got back to it, and, and I got another victory last last Saturday. And this last Saturday was another knockout. Well, another knockout, yeah. What round was this one in? They stopped in the end of the seventh. End of the seventh. This yeah. one went a little bit farther than you. A little usual. bit further, yeah. The guy was you, tough. The guy was tough. You took a lot of shots. Took uh-huh. a lot of shots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you like to fight, so I'm, I'm like, I'm already knowing this dude had to have been able to to hack it for a while. Yeah, he did. He definitely did. Are you then you did, did you are you doing a good job of taking care of yourself and stay did you did you get hit a lot in the fight or do you feel like I got I got hit a good amount of times again so it's about who do you think out of all the guys that you fought was it the guy that got got you stopped you that hit the hardest out of anybody you fought? I want to say hit the hardest. He didn't he hit just, the hardest. He, he just caught you. He he kept catching me, yeah. catching me. It's just the repetition who, of shots. Who would you say that like the hardest hitting guy that you fought so far in your career was? Because I'm sure you, you 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 remember that. Um, some guy. He was. I fought him at the uh, the T-Mobile Arena for the Canelo Golovkin in a card um, for the rematch when they fought. I fought in the free pay per view portion, so like right before the the pay per view fights, my fight was there. So I fought right before the pay per view fights, and I remember it's a big ass card to be on. Yeah, big card to be on. But this is this is before the this is before all the preliminary fights. Yeah, so like still, bro. Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a big venue. Yeah, yeah. not too much people, you know. Yeah. Um, there's there's a somewhat crowd there. I remember this guy popped me with like a one two, and I'm like, damn, this fool is like he has heavy <laughs> ass hands. I mean, he, at the time I was like, I believe eleven and zero, maybe twelve and zero, and he was eleven and two or eleven and one, but he had win all wins by knockout. Oh, okay. But I looked at his record. I'm like, ah, uh, he stopped guys that are like not the best. They had losing records, so that can be a false, you know, um, understanding of like. The, the guy's record or like if it's padding down wins, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, 100%. So it's like, oh, well, he's supposed to knock all these guys out. Yeah. But when he punched me, I'm like, damn, this fool hits hard. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably. But that was the hardest hitting guy. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. So like we, me and you were talking about this off camera, but like so now after <laughs> this this next win, like. Yeah. The man, there's always a man to beat in your division. Yeah. In boxing, like. It gets a little bit different, right? Like for MMA, it's a little bit easier for me to follow, right? There's, there's only one champion. Well, because, yeah, because there's other promotions, right? But if mm-hmm. you look at it, the major promotion is always going to be the UFC. Yeah. And they got one champion in the one weight champion, class. One champion, yeah. There's you a one top dog. One top dog. So it's like with boxing, there's like multiple. There's four or five sanctioning bodies. That are the major ones. That are the major ones, yeah. So you got four to five different champions yeah. in, in the same weight class. So the goal is to go through one of these to get to the top of one of them so you could become a champion yeah. and then you try to do champion versus champion fights. Yeah, exactly. That's how that's, that's how, how boxing works. That's right? how it is. You unify. Right. Unify the titles. Right. So right now, like we were talking, like I said, we were talking about this off camera. Ter- Terrence Crawford was, was the man, right? Terrence Crawford was the man. At, at, one, 100, at 147 pounds. 147 pounds. And he's, he's talking about going up now. He's talking about what you, going what you, up. What are your thoughts on Terrence Crawford as phenomenal, a fighter? Phenomenal fighter. He, you have to be on the A. Your, 
your A plus plus game to fight him. Yeah, can't make any mistakes because he's the type of fighter. If you make one little single mistake, he'll catch you. Yeah. Catch you slipping, kind of like Floyd back in his era. He can't make any mistakes. He's a great fighter, man. I have great nothing fighter. to say. It would nothing. be. A, it would have been a like great fight for you. Yeah. And, to and for the fans to for see, fan, yeah. If you guys would have been able to get in there and mix it up, and you never know, you never know. Yeah, you never know. The door, the door, the, yeah, door, the door's gonna be open. Yeah. The door's not shut on that. <laughs> so is there is there a plan for for the next fight already? Is there somebody we're looking at? Uh, still no, nothing. I mean, it's freshly a week off my fight. Still don't know. And and you're right now like in considered the best in the weight class. I'm considered one of the best in the weight class. Who's number one right now? I mean, probably the guy that beat me, one of him. Uh, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of fighters. There's him. Are you? Are, is there a ranking system like in in the for you right now? Like, are you ranked in a certain? I actually don't know. I haven't kept up. Yeah. Um, I was ranked number one before the fight with Giovanni Santian. He took my mandatory spot, so I was ranked number one by WBO. The winner of that fight automatically fights Terence Crawford or the WBO championship. But with Crawford holding up all the belts, and there's talks of him. Moving up. Moving up, leaves all the belts open. We don't know what's gonna happen. So I think Giovanni Santiago is gonna have first dibs on that. Yeah. So that for sense. me, I have to really kind of rebuild a little bit of myself. I'm not too far gone. Let's go knock somebody else out. Yeah. So knock somebody else <laughs> out. I'm big let's on that go, door, man. Let's go and and represent Santa and knock somebody else yeah. out again, and then we'll, you know whatever. Whatever opportunities could that what a way to to win the title if dude goes and wins the title and I go beat him and then you it. go beat oh, oh man that would be the perfect that would story be the perfect story yeah that's what we need to happen yeah. bro I mean and and that's kind of looks how it it like it could play it could play it could play, it, out, it could play out. there's like you said there's never you never yeah. know in this sport so man I think like from the way you fight and like the the amount of dedication and stuff that you have and and uh, you know shout out to to Rob your, your one of your coaches yeah dude. Robert Vincent shout yeah, out to him yeah. um he tells me about your work ethic and stuff bro yeah. and and I mean, he's there he's 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 always there you know, yeah, with me man. and it's like five thirty in the morning sky's the <laughs> sky's the limit bro and like I I know you're gonna get what you want bro and it's only a matter of time man we, and, and just hopefully you know the next you I mean you're with the best promotion you could be with. Yeah, definitely. You and know, I just resigned with them too. So, I mean, sky's the limit for me. I just got to fucking believe in myself and just keep pushing forward. No, yep. Yep. That's why I, I think uh, it's just a matter of time. Couple more fights, bro. And you'll be right back in that, in that, in that talk of that title. And just make sure Rob, make sure you got some tickets for your boy though. You yeah. Know what I'm <laughs> well, okay. Um, some more questions for you, bro. So that's the goal right now is, you know, just chill out. We were coming off of victory. Yeah. We're chilling. When you're in your off time after a fight, are you still training just the same exact way? Like you're getting ready for a fight or is it just a little bit different on the sparring? Uh, yeah, no sparring right now for a little bit, taking the time off sparring. Cause you don't want to be in the gym, just constantly getting punched and stuff. You mean right now leading up to a fight now, now, like now that you're this experienced, are you still sparring like you were when you were younger, or is it like less? Or like how many times a week do you, do you spar like getting ready for a fight? I spar three times a week, but now we've kind of put the emphasis on less is better sometimes. So yeah, I, I do. I typically still do my hard sparring sessions, but then once the body is kind of like really sore, then my coach kind of knows it. I tell my coach, or we kind of both like, you know what, we'll take the day off sparring. Yeah, which you don't have to kill yourself to. What do you do sparring. for recovery? You do any types of recovery and stuff like that 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 uh, you find have have kind of helped you with um, healing and all that stuff. Yeah, you, man. I mean, I get deep tissue massages. I have my massage therapist uh, Stephanie Vera. She's always coming in clutch. You know, hurts hurts like a like a mofo getting those massages with the elbows and yeah, everything and yeah, do that for, for sure. muscle recovery. For sure, I do cryo. Uh, I go to cryo spot right here in Santa Ana where they do the cryo chamber. I do all that. And I just ice my hands down pretty much all the time. And if I have like little bumps, bruises, just ice it down. And you and so so you're definitely doing the recovery part. Yeah. And then as far as eating and stuff as a as a lifestyle, do you do you are you on a specific regimen? Do you eat super healthy all the time? Now, like, um, is, it, is it a is nah, it a, not all the time? You know, I, right now, right now, I'm enjoying my tacos. Like, yeah, <laughs> he's back on the taco. Yeah, right now, I'm, I'm enjoying my Mexican food. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, but at least you know, like, hey, I'm not gonna let myself get too out of shape. Exactly. I might eat what I want a little bit, but I'm gonna be working out every day. So yeah, I can, exactly. I can, you know, I realize that, you know, like, you know, I I work, I lift weights six days a week. I run, bike, and swim three days a week. Mm. You know, I train at, at night. You know, I realize, man, I can eat 
pretty much when you work out like yeah, that. Yeah, when you, you work out. You know, and, and you live a healthy like lifestyle. That. You're not drinking alcohol and stuff like that. You can pretty much eat whatever you, you can want. get away with it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. but but yeah, hell yeah. So um aside from that, let's add let's let's get some other things and let's talk about some other stuff now. Yeah, like, yeah. Who's your favorite so Oscar De La Hoya <laughs> was your favorite boxer of those times? Yeah. Who's your favorite boxer right now? Damn man, I don't really I don't really have one. Do you right do now. you would you follow the sport at all? Do you yeah, I follow do, the do you sport. Watch, what did you think of uh like the Ngannou versus uh the Tyson Fury fight? Did you watch that fight? Uh, were you? I, I bet I you were it. like, oh, he got him to get beat up. Huh? I thought he was gonna get beat up, but damn, <laughs> he was putting some hands on. Hey, he, he dropped did, him. He did a good job in that fight. He did do a good job in that. He didn't fight. do it with Joshua though, bro. No, Gosh, took damn. Him two rounds. Yeah, <laughs> I said after that one, I was like, man, go take your ass back to MMA, please. Yeah, don't go, do that again. Back. Yeah, like it's levels. I think what it. I think also what it was is I think. Tyson Fury didn't really take him serious. Yeah, I was thinking that. You get the you get the sense that he didn't take it's him serious. It's like, you know what I mean? He's like, this guy's gonna come to my field where I'm the champion of the world. I'm the I'm the man here. Yeah, and I get it, because like, you know, when I, like for example, I'll put it like this, right? I've been doing jujitsu 19 years now uh-huh. and, and, and MMA. When I get a person that comes in the gym that's like a white belt that's like brand new, that's never done it before, I you know, I think to myself, like, what's he gonna do? Yeah. And I'm sure this is like the same thing Ty- Buck, yeah. Tyson Fury thing. Oh, yeah, He's like, yeah, this guy's definitely. white. He just started boxing. What is like, he going to do? What, gonna what do? is he going to show he, me that I haven't seen? That, right, exactly. And that's that, that's when you get when you get too confident, too cocky. Mm-hmm. That's the type of shit that happens to you. Yeah, that's, you that's, know what I'm that's, saying? That's so so it's crazy, man. So you don't even like you don't there's nobody that I don't I'll be honest with you too, bro. I haven't been watching the boxing anymore because mm-hmm. Like aside from you, like somebody that's from our city, like that I want to see win. Like I, I, there hasn't been nobody really entertaining. I, I'll admit though, I did watch a lot of these Jake Paul, uh, Jake Paul fights, fights that yeah. he's been doing. You know, I, I think they're entertaining and they're kind yeah. of bring eyes to boxing. No, they are. It's it's a good and a bad thing. It's a pros and cons. Cons it being it looks bad on like for for a fighter like me, who's been grinding all his life. Wants to be in a situation, wants to be in a position like that and make life changing money like that. He's a YouTuber who comes to boxing. He, yes, he has eyes, and that's the pros of it. Yeah, he comes to YouTube and he has his platform, he has you know, TikTok, he's got all the streaming, whatever it is, you know, the yeah. platform t- that brings different audiences that never seen boxing that put that could, you know, I could like if I'm on the unicorn and I'm like, I, I do a good job, you know, I'm gonna get. YouTubers that are following me, they're gonna become fans of me, and that's a different audience, not necessarily your day boxing fans that right. already know, heard of me or they haven't. So that that brings different eyes to the table. Yeah, it does. I think all in all, it's like, like as a fighter, like you know, how far is he, the guy really gonna take it? Like he's never gonna beat the the guys in his weight class that are. The yeah, best. I don't think so. Yeah. So it's like. But at the same time, it does bring more different people to the sport. It brings more viewers, yeah. To boxing, which is, I believe, that's a good thing. That is I a believe good thing. It's a good, good thing because for a little while, it, it started to feel like boxing was losing its presence a, a yeah. little bit on you know social media, on TV, mm-hmm. yeah. and stuff like that. And I've always been a fan. I'm mm-hmm. a big fan of boxing, like, and I love. I, I when I was growing up, I loved like Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson and. You know, like George Foreman and, and, and you know, Sugar Ray. And, like, I, I loved all these guys, man. And and, and Lennox Lewis. All, yeah. all, I grew up on watching all this boxing. And then it seemed like it went through a phase where there was nobody, like, those type of characters anymore. Yeah. Different. You know what I'm saying? It just the, completely changed. Yeah, generations, different eras. And then eras. you went through the Pacquiao and Mayweather, gen- Mayweather generation. generation. Yeah. And it was just, like, those two were, like, the, you know, the, the icons of the sport. And, like... Like, as far as I was talking about this recently on another podcast, in my opinion, like, I'm not talking like, you know, who's the most exciting to watch because that's a different story. Yeah. In my opinion, like, if, if I was going to ask you, because I'm going to ask you the same question. In my yeah. opinion, I, I said Floyd Mayweather would probably be the go to boxing. Yeah. Of, and, of all time? Of all time. And the reason, I, let me tell you the reason why yeah. I said this. He made the most money, I, I feel like, out of anybody in boxing. Took the least damage, and on top of all that, like the dude, like never lost. Yeah, undefeated. 
He beat every. He beat every. I I, I know he might have waited out some of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he, he, he planned <laughs> it very well. But I mean, he still he still never lost. Yeah, he never lost. He's he like he and, and now he's like doing you know like exhibitions, making millions of dollars. Right. So in my opinion, like I would say he's the goat for that reason because the goal of boxing is like what to to, to hit, not get hit. Yeah. And make as much money as you can, yeah, right? That's the name of the game. And so that that's what I would say. But what about for you? What, 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 who would you say is the GOAT? Oh, man. There's, there's, if you had to, you can only pick one today, bro. Like, you got to give me. One today? What, j- j- tell me one. Like, if you're going to say, like, bro, this this is my, like, if I, like, I'll, I'll, because I want to talk about MMA too, but yeah. boxing, like, who would you say, like, this is for me the number one guy that ever did it? Oh, man. Like, tough honestly, question. yeah, it's a tough question. I mean, F- Floyd, hands down, no comparison, the, the, the best businessman. Ever. Ever. To make three hundred million in one night against Conor McGregor and, and Manny Pacquiao, without a doubt, Mayweather. For sure. If you want to go to terms with that, yeah, Mayweather would take that hands down. You look but you look at other people. But who, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what you like to watch and what was who's like your goat. Who's your f- favorite like of all time? Have you ever heard of Severus Sanchez? I haven't. Yeah, he's 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 up there. That that that's that's so a one, one of them. Yeah, he's one of them. He's a guy that he died at a young age and he had a very promising career. He was a world champion. Um I believe he was undefeated. He was undefeated at the time. He he died in a car crash and there's so much what ifs like for him. Uh just the style this guy fought, he was relentless. He was also pretty he had great defense. He beat one of the top guys in his in his uh his era. And then I believe he was 23 at the time. Yeah. And he got in a car crash. And then yeah. he's, he's, he's for sure one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, bro. All right. Now, since we're talking about fighting and we've been talking a lot about boxing, now let's, let's talk a little bit because a lot of my viewers do jujitsu. A lot of them do MMA as well. And stuff I, like I prefer that. watching MMA you, more than, than boxing. You, I let, never, <laughs> never thought about trying like jiu- no, uh, man, jiu-jitsu. No, <laughs> no, no. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> That's a whole different ball game, man. Yeah. You know, I gotta pick. I would have to start from scratch. Right, the wrestling, the jujitsu. Right, it's it's a whole different. But ball you gotta game. remember, every fight does start on the feet. It does start on the feet. And, they and take me you, down. And, and, if, like, and if you learn a little bit of defensive wrestling and um, you know just how to get up. You know, defend yourself a little bit on the ground. I, I, you, like, especially a guy as dedicated as you, I'm sure you could do anything you wanted to, bro. But right now, yeah. you're at the top of your sport. So yeah, the, yeah, I'm at top right now. But but growing up, you like, when did you start really watching MMA? When I really started watching MMA, um, who was your first like like? I was, I, everyone has that moment when they say like, "Damn, I, I I like that fighter," and they start watching the sport because of you know what I mean. Uh, Chell Sonnen. Chell Sonnen. Chell Sonnen. Yeah. Chell Sonnen. Yeah. Chell Sonnen was one of the first ones. I remember because he was <laughs> talked he all was. that nonsense, and I'm like, "Damn, I'm gonna watch this food." And this food got knocked out by a. Or he didn't get. He was doing really good for the fan, first Anderson Silva fight. Oh yeah, so that's when got, I first started watching. That uh, was a good UFC. fight. Yeah, he was dominating him, and he gets choked out. And I'm like, damn, yeah, he what got, the hell? He got triangle arm barred. He got triangle arm barred in the last, like, in the mini, last round. Yeah, of the last yeah. He rounds. did one of those, like, we call it, like, the, they call it the Brazilian taps. Like, like they tap, like, but then they pretend like they didn't tap. Yeah. They keep going up to that. But, uh, yeah, Chelsea Sutton was fun to watch, man. He was talk, he talk, he talked so much shit, and, you know, he brought so much eyes to sport. And made yeah, it, he inter- was the first bad guy, really. He, he, made it inter- he made that shit entertaining, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's when you got it. Okay, that's cool. So you were... You were a fan of Chael too. You, you I, I, I didn't follow his career like that. I would say he's the first person that, that got you, me that you got got you into got the me sport. into the sport. And then from there it was Anson Silva. And then I'm like, damn, that was that was badass. Then I started seeing GSP. Yeah, and I'm like, damn, like these foods are all good. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that, so okay, cool. So you're a fan of MMA too. Who would, yeah. you, who would you say is your favorite fighter I, in, in mixed martial arts or, or your goat of MMA? Goat of MMA, yeah. fuck. I mean Anderson, what he did back then. Anderson, he was Anderson, on, he was on spree, yeah. Anderson, man, Anderson was so fun to watch when yeah. he went. H- him or uh, um, GSP, <coughs> John, uh, John Bones Jones. Oh, Bones, yeah. yeah. I, I I talked about this on the other podcast, <laughs> so I have to keep it real. Like my favorite fighters are Nick and Nate Diaz. Oh hell yeah, they scrap just because you know they're like they remind me of like people, you know kids here. from Santa. Yeah, <laughs> from here, yeah. <laughs> so like you know what I mean. So like. 
Yeah, th- those two are always going to be my favorite fighters to, to, to watch. But, like, if you're going to talk about GOAT, like, who's the best that ever did it, you have to give it to John Jones. Oh, John Jones. Without Hands doubt. down, the best, for I mean, sure. His only loss was... Yeah, it, and that wasn't the that wasn't a loss. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, he's, he's, he's a beast, bro. And then, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I agree with you on that one, bro. And then uh, another question, that I, you know, guys, for those of you that don't know, right, there's this mall out here. I've been going to this mall... Since I was a little kid, right? <laughs> I used to go there with my homies to hang out and stuff like that. You know, back in the days, there used to be a lot of girls that would go there oh, and yeah. stuff like that. Like, yeah, when I was, I'm like a <laughs> lot, I'm a lot older than you, I think. So, but like, um, yeah, it was a spot to go hang out. Yeah. And like, there'd be, you know, pretty girls there, blah, 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 you know. And uh, I walked through there. This guy's got a has had a post. Your yeah, face yeah. has been in the in the mall out yeah, here for got a, a long time. Yeah, shout out to one of my sponsors, Cal Attorneys. Shout, you know. shout out to them. Yeah, they 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 put me up there in the and yeah, that's pretty dope, of, bro. A lot of publicity. You, yeah, <laughs> you got like you got like I'm just like you know like you want you ever want to take like I'm sure you probably have a girlfriend, but if you didn't, yeah. you know like just surprise the girl yeah. like yeah. hey let's go to the mall real let's quick. Let's go to the mall. Right? You're walking around like who's that? <laughs> That'd be the hardest. <laughs> like, like she'd be like, "Is that you?" Yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Like uh, just just some doing things, <laughs> some things I do on the side. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah, <laughs> man. I'm excited for you, bro. I think uh, you. I think um, you know, like I think we got Orange County. I think Santa Ana. I think we got so many talented people out here. Yo, oh, especially uh, Santa Ana. Santa Ana has. You, you know tremendous. what I mean? That this place is slept on, in my opinion. Like when when it comes to fighters, when it comes to music, when it comes to lots Art, of things, just artists and everything. Ex- exactly, and I, I think you know, I want to see us win, and and you know, you're a guy from from my town, and like you're fighting against the best in the world, man. So. You know, it, it's been an honor to, you know, have you here today to, you know, you. to, to tell your story of, you know, growing up. Like, you've been doing this since you were a kid. Like, and this is like, you know, this is like a full circle story that, yeah. you know, could, you know, one day we could look back, you know, and you beat this guy that beat you and win the title and, you know, everything comes to fruition man and, and, and it's going to be beautiful, bro. Yeah, man. And I see and I see it happening for you, bro. Thank you. Um before we get out of here bro like you know this you know i'm sure a lot of people will see this and yeah you know if there's anybody you want to shout out you know anybody you want to thank uh your sponsors or anybody the floor you know it's yours and you know uh, shout out anybody you want to your coaches uh yeah i mean just, you know, i know i know it takes an army to, to make a champion bro yeah and, i mean and, and, and really, then, you know anybody the floor is yours and you know i appreciate that and also let everybody know your social media and all your handles and yeah well, i mean first of all if you can follow me at alexis rocha 777 on ig and really just want to thank the fans thank the people that support me you know people that are there for me um my coaches all of them uh, my family, my girlfriend, you know, they they all support me tremendously and they're always just there by my side, helping me get better, not just as a fighter, as a human being and, you know, just moving forward and, you know, I like being a good role model, so shout out to all the little kids that are coming up, whether you're overweight or whether you're getting in trouble, it's just everyone has a story. I hope um, I could share some light and share some uh, positivity to all the kids and just be a good role model. Um, I grew up just like anyone else. You know, from Santa Ana, I have a mural now built in downtown Santa Ana. I'm not trying to chew my own horn, but, you know, but it just kind of, it just came with self belief and a lot of dedication and hard work. You know, days in and days out, of just grinding every day. But I'm here to tell you, if you believe in yourself and you put in that work, you're gonna get to that place. It's not gonna be easy. I'll tell you firsthand. You can tell you anyone firsthand. It's not gonna be easy because life ain't easy. But if you keep pushing forward. And just have that faith in yourself and that faith in God, man. You're going to go to a lot of places. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's got a mural and a, a, yeah, a and poster. A yeah. in the mall. Come on, man. It's see, tight. see how to take. At first, I'd take her to the mall. Then I'd take her. <laughs> I'm just playing. But that's crazy, bro. That's amazing. Uh, amazing accomplishment, man. I've always wanted. I Like with the music thing, I always wanted to have something like that. What up, everybody? Want to take a quick second out of the podcast just to give a shout out to our sponsor. The best criminal defense attorney I know. The last time I got in trouble, I needed somebody that was going to look into my case and actually fight for me and give me the best deal possible. And he did that. And I'll make sure that he does that for you. Make sure you shout me out if you guys reach out to him. They're the sponsor of the convo. 
you know anybody, a family member or yourself that make a mistake, you want somebody like him on your side. Arash, please let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Thank you. Arash Hashemi, 310-448-1529 or HashemiLaw.com, H-A-S-H-E-M-I-L-A-W.com or just Google hashtag better call hash. Remember that, better call hash. You'll find me on every social media channel all over the internet. 310-448-1529. You better call hash and you're doing it you know with yeah. fighting so so more blessings to you bro and you got my support bro and above everything like you know before we do close it out like i always tell people like <clears throat> the main purpose of my life now yeah is you know i went through a lot as a kid i, I went through a lot of mistakes did a lot of things and you know my viewers you know uh no, that watch the show know and you know for you, the viewers that tune in you know off off on your end you know i i, I had been in, gone to jail i had you know experienced you know drugs i had done lots of things in my life but martial arts martial arts really changed my life you Would know you say it, it saved you? it saved my life yeah you know i know a lot of people say it but it truly saved my life because it took me out of that environment it gave me a people that were always going to tell me good things and positive things to do it brought me around a family of people that became my friends to this day uh people that I, I i talked to from when i first started 19 years ago i still talk to and they never ever steered me in the right direction do you also believe that you know because that's another important thing your boxing gym is tko boxing yeah, gym, yeah. right that's an, another place for the youth of today mm -hmm. you know the, the the troubled of today even older people that need something people coming out of uh, war and uh, arm out the army yeah don't do you believe that boxing is because uh, i do a great place another great outlet for people to help them in their life not just to teach them how to fight uh yeah i, I would say not just in boxing you say with jujitsu with with anything it's it, yes it's a combat sport there's going to be some violence there but it's it's a passion you know they call it sweet science and um once you start going you build this passion for it you just start building so much that it just you know you just start loving the sport and it just takes you away from all the bad environment from being out here you know being in the streets going with your friends hanging late nights to going to the gym going back home resting because you're tired waking up the next morning to go get those early miles in which humbles you it humbles you man. which makes you a better person it makes you, and you go to the gym you go to spar and you get beat up by a guy <laughs> more experienced with you and you're like i'm gonna get that guy and i'm gonna do whatever it takes to get that guy and then from there you start eating better you start working out harder you start telling yourself mentally but you're gonna get better and it's it's a, it's a beautiful thing to say and it's it's so hard to tell you the emotions because i feel like you have to go into it because you put your heart and soul into this yes and 100 yes, percent. when the rewards there i mean when you keep going the reward's always going to be there and it's going to be like the light at the end of the tunnel and it's just so satisfying at the end 100 percent. and see there's an, here's another story of someone you know that took it and you know changed his life with i consider boxing one of the oldest martial arts mm -hmm. I, I consider every form of fighting a martial art yeah definitely and so um whatever it is that you know gets you into a better life if it's boxing if it's mma if it's jujitsu go do that yeah stay out stay out of the streets stay out of you know the clubs stay out of drinking all the time and doing drugs and these types of things and find yourself something to be passionate about and moral to the story is make a better you yeah just like i did just like he's doing and one day you might have your mural. Yeah, anything's <laughs> possible. And, and your poster. Anything's possible. Yeah, anything's possible. God bless you, bro. Appreciate you, thank, brother. Th thank you a lot for, for coming here today. Guys, Alexis Rocha. Thank you. Make sure you guys follow him, TKO Boxing Gym. Alexis Rocha, 777 yeah, on, on Instagram. Instagram. Make sure you follow him, guys. Like, subscribe. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Tell your mama and your daddy.